Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to be planting three Autumn Majesty Encore Azaleas. These are new for 2021. This one has a uh, beautiful double purple flower on it. Uh, this variety can reach about three feet in height, about three and a half feet in width. Perfect little low, compact uh, doming plant. Uh, keeps its leaves in the winter. It's evergreen. Blooms in the spring, summer, and fall. Sometimes on these uh, Encore Azaleas, it can take a little while for them to establish uh, their bloom uh, pattern. I'm planting three of these at a friend's house. Uh, this side of his yard, he actually gets uh, quite a bit of sun. Uh, other parts of this yard are very, very shady. I'm going to put these three Autumn Majesty Encore Azaleas in here, and then I'm gonna show you some few other interesting things in this yard. I've actually done a full tour video of this yard. Uh, it's September right now, and there's still some things that look really really nice here and some interesting pieces that maybe i haven't shown on the channel before that you guys may be interested in he has very heavy red clay here he uses this uh, leaf mold that you can get from the uh, city of raleigh and uh, puts it as a top dress here and uh, when i plant it gets incorporated uh, into the ground great for drainage in this clay these azaleas like moist well-drained soil uh, acid loving uh, as as well so the conditions are perfect here, really, as long as I mix in a little bit of this leaf mold and I leave them slightly elevated. This bed is also on a mound, so it should drain perfectly. There's some construction going on at the uh, neighbor's house, so if you hear some uh, background noise, that's what that is. Uh, this plant right here is called Sestrum or a Chilean jessamine. It sees beautiful yellow flowers on this. I came over here the other day and shot some video on it, so I'm gonna have a, an individual uh, video on this. But what a beautiful yellow flowering shrub right here in the middle of September. And just look how beautiful, how beautiful that is. Uh, he's got some nice uh, crepe myrtles out here in the sunnier part uh, of his yard. And uh, I did a full, like I say, I did a full tour video here. I also did a video on just the uh, Camellia japonicas in the fall. I'll link those uh, up in the corner if you're watching uh, on YouTube. There are um, a lot of nice hydrangeas out here, hydrangea paniculatas. You know, here we are in the fall and, you know, they're so beautiful in the summer, but then, you know, they do this kind of thing and turn, and turn pink and hold on to those flowers for a while. I planted those three uh, Autumn Majesty Encore azaleas right here. You can see the sun starting to peek in. There's a really nice uh, peony here. Uh, that still hasn't uh, hasn't gone dormant. Very vigorous growing one. There's a hibiscus, a tropical hibiscus in that container. I'm guessing he'll just bring bring that inside for the winter. I was here earlier this year and planted these three um, autumn lily Encore azaleas, and they're back in bloom here in the fall as we would expect. Uh, look at these elephant ears. These are just these are absolutely crazy. I'll, I'll take a photo of myself standing next to them. I, the, this is eight feet tall, probably in the center right there. A lot of them look like this this year. I don't know if it was the cool, wetter spring uh, or, or what it was, but uh, they are absolutely gigantic everywhere I'm seeing them. Uh, this fall, again, those there's hydrangea paniculatas right here. He has a beautiful, in his only really really sunny spot in the yard. He always has a really nice uh, perennial border uh, out here. Some things are still uh, holding on. Of course, uh, the zinnias are not uh, perennials, but the zinnias are still blooming, uh, blooming strong here. Uh, he's got uh, several, uh, let's see, get this camera adjusted for this. Uh, this is a uh, really nice salvia right here, a pink flowering uh, salvia. He, this bed is absolutely full of cone flowers during the season. Of course, they finished uh, at this point, and I wish I had come over here and filmed those, and, and I will next year. He's got a ton of dahlias. Here's some that were cut back that are coming back out to bloom. Here's some that are staked up uh, right here. Um, get my shadow uh, out of that so you can see it. Uh, just really, really nice. Um, double flowering dahlias there. I think these doubles right here are loose enough that the bees can get in them okay. I see a lot of people showing these really beautiful um, full double, uh, really formal double uh, dahlias. And I, I, I think the bees really struggle to, uh, to actually get into those. Uh, my single uh, ones at the house that I did from seed, you know, have two and three bees on them at, at the time. Uh, several more uh, salvia 
uh, varieties right here. This white, white flowering sage right there. Bees absolutely love these. Uh, so do the hummingbirds. And uh, one additional salvia right there. And then uh, after that, there's this uh, beautiful variegated uh, ginger, which is in bloom here. Super, super fragrant. Here's something I haven't shown on the uh, channel before. This is a uh, curcuma. This is actually turmeric. Uh, some people call these uh, hidden lilies, but it's actually turmeric. Uh, I don't know if these narrow foliage ones are hardy outdoors here. There are some hardy ones in my area. I'm in zone 7B in Raleigh. And there's, you know, the ones that I see coming back every year have a slightly broader foliage than this, so I don't actually know uh, what, what species this are. There's a white one uh, right there, but this is, these are so beautiful and they uh, bloom like this in the uh, late summer and fall uh, every year. He's got these uh, container planted here. Uh, I'm gonna swing around and uh, show you what the bananas did this year. <laughs> these, are, these are absolutely amazing. I don't, know how tall, I don't know how tall that is. I'm gonna be totally guessing that they're probably tipping uh, 18 feet or so. Uh, I'm six feet tall. I, I think that, I mean, maybe 20, maybe even 20 feet at the peak of those. Uh, right there, there's another one uh, over my head here. You can see how impressive they are. I don't know, how, that leaf right there, right there, I'm not exaggerating, is at least, you know, six feet long. Uh, maybe, maybe slightly longer than that. It won't show it. The scale won't be right in this, uh, in this camera for you guys, but uh, really, really beautiful. He's got a lot of Mostly Camellia japonicas in this yard, and that's what I did a tour of last year, but he also has a lot of Camellia sasanquas, uh, and they're budded up like crazy to bloom. Uh, another one right here, very large one. And uh, let me get in there close. I don't know what varieties these are without them, without them being in flower. Probably can't even name them then. There's so many varieties, but uh, that's a really nice one right there. Dark, really super dark green foliage. You can see the difference in the growth habits in these Camellia sasanquas. Here's a, here's a big giant one that would make a great screening plant. Uh, and uh, here's a, uh, a spreading uh, variety right here. So anyway, I thought you'd be interested in this uh, uh, tropical uh, look to this space. I'm gonna spin back around so we can see those uh, one time, uh, one more time. And there is a uh, hot tub on the other side of this wall right here. So these bananas actually over, uh, how would you like to be in a hot tub with bananas over to, you know, bana big giant banana leaves over the top of you. So where I planted those azaleas is out on in front of this fence right here, and that uh, perennial border is over that way, out in the more sunny area. Most of this front yard, though, is pretty shady, and he's created kind of a tropical uh, paradise in here. And there's another banana right there. This uh, this uh, plant here is called uh, is it a plectranthus. Uh, this is kind of a light purple one. These can be used as annuals in my area, or uh, brought in and out and kept as uh, perennials. I have a darker purple one at the house. I'll show you guys uh, soon. Uh, back here around this tree and this patio, there's a little retaining wall and uh, there's a, a big, beautiful farfugium in the middle there. There's one plant, I planted one of these at the house and he's got a few more of these uh, uh, turmeric or uh, hidden lilies. Uh, they're actually still in containers here so he can take them in and protect them in the winter time. So I really like this garden a lot. It, it's got a lot of hidden spaces. Uh, I tend to, uh, I'm really always drawn to gardens where you have to uh, move around. You can't walk, just walk past the house and get everything uh, all at once. You've got to uh, actually, uh, you know, take a sidewalk here and a turn there and uh, see additional things. And he's kind of created those kind of rooms uh, in this space. So I planted these three Autumn Majesty uh, here and uh, I'll come back in the spring and take a look at them uh, when they're in a uh, flower. Again, these are just, you know, perfect little low uh, three by three or three by three and a half uh, foot, uh, perfect little mounds that will bloom multiple times a year. It's fall when I'm planting these, they need to be watered in well and uh, they need to be checked on occasionally. Fall tends to be a little dry uh, in the Southeast. So, but I'll come over here and just dig down, you know, a couple inches to see if they need water. If they need water, I saturate the area very thoroughly and then uh, back off and uh, wait for them to actually need water again before watering. Thanks for watching this video.